All right. All right. I am recording, JR. Phone's going off. Okay. Um, so first and foremost, I mean, starting off, just tell us kind of why. What what inspired you to to make a run for for Congress here in District Nine? Um, you know, I believe that uh, the District Nine, that District Nine, has been ignored just for way too long, Josh. I think when you look at um, Marcy Captor being in office for as long as she has, uh, her tenure just put her out of relevancy, in my opinion. Uh, her her policies are failed. You know, when you, when you look at the consequences we're suffering right now with, you know, whether it's high gas prices, higher taxes, uh, or even the crisis at the border, I think that it's all a combination of failed democratic policies. And I think that District 9 is being impacted and we can't suffer from that any longer. You know, if, if you were to become the representative for District 9, I mean, what would be the first thing that you would want to do in office? Um, there's plenty, there's a lot of things that I would like to do in office. Um, one thing you hear right now is President Trump's Save America platform, and I support that. But I, I'd like to take a look at putting District 9 first and Ohio first. So I would look at issues that, uh, that propel us to the top. And, you know, we need to take care of the home front before we can take care of anything else. And while I subscribe again to the Save America platform, Ohio needs to come first and Toledo needs to come first, Sandusky, Lorraine, uh, Cuyahoga County, Lorain County, you know, we need a politician that's looking at this district and uh, looking out for its best interests. And that's, that's what I plan to do. So I can't specify one issue in general. Um, I'm, I'm still early in my campaign. I'm building my platform right now as we speak. So I would be doing myself a disservice if I was to go to that route. But I can tell you that anything you're concerned with, I'm concerned with. It's, it's about the constituents. My job is to represent the people of the 9th District and not myself. So I'll be carrying issues to Washington, D.C. that I hear from the people. And, and a little bit on your background. I mean, you were, you were born and raised in Toledo, have lived in District 9 your whole life. I mean, what have you kind of seen, seen throughout your life that, that has kind of inspired you to, to want to take office and, and represent the people that you know, you've grown up with? Well, you know, I grew up off the Grain Street on the North End. Um, you know, I graduated from Woodward High School. Right after Woodward, I decided to join the Air Force. Spent four years in the Air Force. Uh, traveled overseas, supporting Operation Enduring, Enduring Freedom. After the Air Force, I was lucky enough to come back home, uh, finish my master's degree, and uh, you know, started out working out at Davis Bessie. Um, what I bring and, and where I can parallel what I've learned uh, coming from the 9th District, coming from inner city Toledo, is that it's a tough road uh, to, to, to become successful in today's society. It's a tough road in District 9's economy uh, to, to, to be successful. And, um, you know, I can bring uh, remembrance of that. And, you know, I, I can empathize with, you know, our, our youth and, you know, our young adults that are looking to develop a path and, and, a, and a lifestyle and, uh, and grow families in the district. I, I know how hard it is to establish yourself. And, you know, those, those frames of mind um, certainly are instilled in me. And, uh, you know, I, I can bring that perspective, when it, with, especially with respect to job growth, the economy, uh, helping our youth with education programs, and also professional development in general, right? And um, another, another big issue that I'm looking at right now is crime. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of crime in, in our Toledo area specifically that needs to be addressed. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of a lot of times in my childhood, uh, you know, where I'd be in bed at night and get woken up by a gunshot, and uh, you know, I don't I don't think that's right. I don't think any family should have to go through that. And those are some those are some things that I would like to make changes, and I would help the law, local law enforcement and leaders in Toledo make make changes. And you know, Jar, obviously, kind of your your name kind of came out there in the public um, during the Trump campaign, Trump presidency, um, you know, your yard captured headlines with drones flying mm -hmm. above and, and showing these pictures that we saw that, you know, really kind of went viral, showed up across the nation. I mean, tell me kind of a little bit about that experience and um, and kind of how that played into people coming to your home and, and being a part of, of that conversation during the campaign. Well, after supporting President Trump painting the lawn, you know, like you said, I got a lot of attention, um, be it local news media or national news media. And um, with that said, I was given a platform. And, 
by by saying that, I mean, I was giving an opportunity to have people that wanted to follow me on social media. And so I tried to use that platform just like I did to support President Trump. But one thing that I've always carried and one thing I've always learned or one thing I learned through, you know, my navigation of the political world and and develop, developing my political beliefs is that, you know, our country has really strayed away from having open intellectual dialogue and political discourse. You know, political discourse in itself allows you in, through conversation to connect truths, knowledge, your virtue, and what you believe is justice. And we don't have that anymore because if you're a Democrat, you it, it seems to be that you just generally don't like Republicans. And if you're a Republican, you generally don't like a Democrat. And so I tried to use the platform to inspire an environment of discourse. And so I decided to, you know, put my money where my mouth is. And I had uh, some some parties at my house where we uh, watched the presidential debate where, you know, I had that on a Megatron TV. It was like a 26 foot TV. I had rented a 26 foot stage where local politicians could address and speak to their constituents. And I had a, a, a friend of mine who owns a, a, a restaurant in Toledo and a, a food truck service in Toledo come out and cook food for everyone. And, um, you know, I invited everyone in the community, uh, Republican or Democrat, and we had both both sides of the aisle come out and we celebrated that night and we had a really, really, really good time. And a lot of people walked away with new friends. And, I, you know, I, I, we talked a little bit before we started the interview just about the experience. You were down in D.C. Um, as part of the protest when the Capitol riots broke out. I mean, mm -hmm. talk to me a little bit about that experience and, and kind of where you were as that began to develop in, into the situation that it kind of unfolded into. Yeah, well, I ended up um, helping a bunch of unfortunate, financially, you know, unfortunate folks. Um, I raised about twenty twenty five thousand dollars somewhere. I can't remember the number exactly uh, through donations from other people and myself. And um, you know, I was able to raise enough money to take a lot of people to Washington D.C. Now, these folks, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a sample of the population. One of them was a double Purple Heart recipient that had been burnt over ninety percent of his body. Another was a quadriplegic uh, Purple Heart uh, Vietnam War veteran who was restricted to a wheelchair. Uh, I brought him and his wife from Florida. Uh, I brought the Purple Heart recipient uh, from, from Chicago, and he was an Iraqi uh, war veteran. Um, I brought grandmothers and grandfathers and mothers and daughters and husbands and wives, and they were all of varying age groups. And we went there to support the president peacefully. And when the incident at the Capitol happened, we were heartbroken. Um, we, we, it was a, it was a tenuous emotional process for me. I won't lie. Um, you know, I have fortunately captured it all, um, you know, on social media, uh, there's posts of me, you know, posting out my, um, uh, you know, just my displeasure with what was going on. And, um, so when everything started to happen, you know, and the police started to push on everybody and the violence started, um, we, we all left. And, um, you know, I was responsible for 60 to 70 people uh, there at the Capitol building and I had multiple people get injured. And, um, you know, we made sure each and every one of them were safely brought back to our hotel. Um, but I had a lady dislocate her knee. I had a, a, a gentleman, you know, um, had a distal fracture uh, from falling and, um, you know, it was a it was a terrible experience, but you know, it was one that was supposed to be great, and um, um, you know, it resonates with me every day. And uh, I wish it wouldn't have happened. And you, you were obviously there, you know, in support of of the president. <clears throat> um, how did you connect with that that group of people, with those with those veterans and that that, that you took down there? I mean, how how did you um, find that group that wanted to travel with you? Well, I was on Twitter and um, an individual that was in charge of the Stop the Steal movement, um, he had accused me of some things that were untrue, like uh, asking him for retweets and a couple other things. And I questioned the Stop the Steal movement. And uh, I questioned a couple other folks that were posting some conspiracy stuff. 
And, um, you know, I asked him if his, what was his true intent is he said his true intent was to help people come to DC to support the president. And, um, he essentially called me a grifter and a grifter is someone who, you know, uses the popularity of others for their personal gain. And in response to him calling me a grifter, I decided to raise as much money as I could within a three-day period to take as many people to DC as I could. So I posted on Twitter that uh, if anybody was interested in going to Washington, DC, I would, I would be willing to help them out. And um, that gained some attention from other, you know, patriots that wanted to, uh, to help financially. And, you know, they all submitted payments through my, I, I set up a GoFundMe account and, uh, you know, we, we um, screened everyone to make sure that they were, you know, legitimate and not, you know, not, not crazy, I guess, uh, because we were all going to be traveling together. So you obviously don't want to bring someone, you know, dangerous with you. So, you know, me and a couple other folks screened everyone to make sure that they had a legitimate story. We looked through their, you know, you know, their Facebooks and they, they, you know, linked up with us on social media and, uh, you know, the rest is history. I, I helped them um, by virtue of, of just sending them money. And, uh, you know, they were responsible, they were responsible for buying their travel, uh, renting their vehicles, whatever, what have you. Um, essentially, they just said, hey, uh, I went on to uh, Google flights, and it would cost me $500 to fly from home to there, and I would need a rental car. So I'm thinking $650. So I would uh, send them the $650. And then I would tell whoever donated me the money, hey, this is where your money went. And it was a great, a great thing. Yeah, is there anything else that you want to add before we wrap up here? That I no, didn't I just want to ask you about. Uh, I want to let everybody know that you know my intent here is to represent District Nine, and I, I intend to be the most transparent candidate that you've ever seen. And you know, I'm a unifier. I want to bring everyone in this district together, and I want to rally around common sense topics and common sense issues. Okay, I don't want to do anything other than that. I want to represent my constituents and my people and my friends and family in Congress. And you know, there's been attempts out there right now to smear my campaign, but I just wanna let you know, those are definitely untrue. And uh, my actions speak louder than their words because I've done nothing in my past that would lead anyone to believe that I'm affiliated with groups that, uh, um, that I truly don't represent. And thank you for the opportunity, Josh, I appreciate it. Yes, sir. I'm going to go ahead and hit stop here on my end.